Well, hello, everybody. My name is Eric Smith. I'm the president and owner of Redwood Art Group. Uh, this is my wife, Kelly, who works with our company. And uh, Linda Mariano is on. And Laura Mulliken, uh, our uh, graphic designer and creative director. Rob Hibbs is our IT director. And uh, Hannah Smith is our Director of Social Media, and we're all on with you today. So you've all signed up for um, the uh, Redwood Art Group Collective. And I gotta tell you, when we started this project, we were hoping that, well, we were kind of, I, we were hoping that like 10 people would sign up, um, which you're probably thinking, well, that's not very many, but that's a really good number for a very intimate uh, meeting in Santa Fe where you can get a lot of one-on-one -on -one, uh, attention and education and help. And today is your first step in doing that uh, with us. So this is a very informal meeting. Uh, I will tell you that we've had uh, over 10 people sign up. Um, and it's not the entire fair, obviously, because we have 70 plus exhibitors that exhibit at uh, Art Santa Fe every year. But uh, for the collective, which, you know, you're getting that extra attention, um, we've got a really good number and uh, hopefully you learn a lot from it. And the purpose of this really isn't just for Art Santa Fe. The purpose of being part of the collective is that you take things away uh, from my expertise being in the art business for, you know, uh, 33 years now, and the other people on my team that you can use to sustain your career. And I use that word sustain because, you know, when you do a trade show or an art fair or an event or a street fair or whatever, you know, you're taking a shot at, you know, meeting some buyers, meeting some collectors and selling a few pieces of art. But that's not the key to the art business. The key to the art business is to learn how to sustain a career with marketing, uh, you know, data by collecting collectors and getting data so you can stay in touch with people. How to react in your booth when you are talking to somebody or at your home if you're having a home show or whatever it may be. And that's what we want to teach you in this collective uh, in your participation in Art Santa Fe. So that's kind of the overall gist of it. And today's meeting is really to, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you can expect. And then I'm going to turn over to uh, Linda if she wants to say a few words. And then Hannah for sure, because she can help you with some so social media things. So some of you have bought some uh, four by 20 booths. Some people have bought some four by 10 booths. And uh, so the first thing to do when you're signed up for a fair and now you're preparing and we're a couple of months out is to think about how that booth is gonna be laid out. What paintings you have in inventory. What are your most powerful images? And where do you want to display those, which would be on your back wall? So when people are walking by, your best image, your most powerful pieces are on the back wall. And think about how many pieces you can put in a four by 10 piece. The answer is six. So you've got a back wall that's 10 feet wide and 10 feet high, and you could put four pieces on there. And I would highly suggest that they are all the same size, 30 by 30, 40 by 40. You can even squeeze 48 by 48 if you had to. It, it just gets really cramped, but uh, on the sides, not so much in the, uh, not 48, 36 by 48, 36 by four horizontal pieces. Um, and then a couple pieces on the wing walls. Uh, if you wanted to put just some real big pieces on the back wall and maybe two pieces on each wing wall, that's fine too. But you don't want to overhang the booth. I'll give you an example. Uh, I had a lady, Christy Lee, who participated in our Spectrum Miami event uh, this year. 
uh, in December of 2022. And she hung her booth and she totally overhung it. And I walked by the day of the opening and there was about five hours before we were going to open. And I said, can I give you some advice? And she said, sure. And I took four of the pieces down. She had a 10 by 20 booth. She had a big space, but I took four or five of the pieces down and we rehung her booth. And that night she sold four pieces and she was elated. She got picked up by a gallery. The gallery had told her your booth looked great. You obviously know how to hang. She came back to me and was like, thank you so much because she didn't know what she was doing. But it, it's really important not to overhang your booth. So start thinking about that now. Start thinking about the inventory you have and where those pieces will be. Also think about how easy can I make it on myself when I get there? Make sure the pieces already have wire on the back. They're stretched or framed and they're ready to be put up on the wall makes it a lot easier. I can show you on site how to hang your own booth. We'll also have installers there, you know, to make sure that your, your booth gets hung properly. But I mean, I've hung so much art in my life. It just comes very easily where I can lay a booth out and uh, eyeball things in, in, you know, the booths look uh, really nice. Start thinking about making price tags and a good acronym for price tags is TAPS, TAPS, Title, Artist, Price, and Size. You don't have to write all this stuff down as we're talking because you're going to get this anyway in the exhibitor manual and in all of the materials we have for you. So uh, we've got some great education planned for you. Uh, we're going to do, I think, like a three, no, like a two-hour session on Thursday, and then we're going to go on the show floor. And we're gonna be hands-on with you in helping you set up your booth, talking to you about what to expect. Um, and, uh, and then on each morning, we'll have some coffee and donuts or muffins or whatever we have. And <laughs> Linda will take care of that. And then we'll get together every morning and we can kind of talk about your experiences and people you've met the day before and things like that. I will tell you that, um, you know, we do, uh, we produce, you know, six, seven shows a year. And our Miami events and our New York events are our really big, huge events. You know, Miami has 40,000 people and New York has 25,000 people. Santa Fe has three to 4,000 people. So there's a lot fewer people going through there. But I will tell you this, you need to be attentive because they are buyers and we sell a lot of art at Art Santa Fe. Those, those artists that are really good artists always sell. There's people that have come to the show before and not sold, but come back the next year and sold. And you know that's part of being part of the collective is to teach you that things don't happen overnight for artists. It takes a long time and a lot of work you know, it takes a lifetime to become an overnight excess, success. You've probably heard that in the art business, and it's so true. Um, so with that, Linda, uh, are you prepared? Linda's internet is out in her neighborhood, so she's on her phone. Um, she's actually disappeared, so I think she's even okay. having more difficulties. Okay. So let's, uh, let me just stop right here before we uh, talk to Hannah a little bit and see if there's any questions. So if you have a question, don't everybody unmute at once, but if you have a question, go ahead and unmute and, and uh, ask a question. Or you can type it in the chat, right, Laura? Yeah, go ahead and type in the chat too. Unless nobody has any questions. <laughs> uh. Ruth? Hello, can you hear me? No. Yes. Uh, oh, okay. I was just wondering on the framing aspect of it. I'm I have paintings on uh, two inch panels. Uh, you know the wood panels, and I was wondering, do they have to be framed? Uh, say that again. You oh, your paintings on wood panel. Yes, but they're two inches deep or one well, inch. No, no, they don't have to be framed. They have a wire on the back ready to hang. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I would just ask you. Stretched canvas is fine. You know, uh, if you're painting on paper, um, whether they're etchings or prints or, you know, whatever, 
squash, uh, you know, that should be framed. Um, yeah, Linda just said she's 100% offline, so she's not joining us. Uh, so just everything needs to be ready to hang. It's not a requirement of ours so much as it is, well, it is because it looks better. But when people buy things, they want to take it home and hang it, right? All right. So let's kind of talk a little bit about that. A lot of the people that uh, come to the Santa Fe show, a lot of them are local, but they're really not local. I mean, there's a lot of New Yorkers and a lot of people from around the country that have second homes in Santa Fe. So if you do have a van or a vehicle that is uh, accessible, and it will be, um, you can uh, do home shows. So if somebody can't decide on site whether they like a piece or not, you could offer to take it to their house. And when you do that, take three or four pieces because if they don't like that one, they might like another one. And we're going to go through all this on Thursday before uh, the event, but that's just a little tidbit of um, salesmanship that uh, you can put in your back pocket because we've done a lot of home shows in Santa Fe and sold a lot of art that way. So let me just tell you what to expect when you get there. You can arrive, you know, Thursday morning, you can arrive. That's or uh, yeah, the day before. If you arrive Wednesday, that's fine. Santa Fe is a pretty laid back community. The convention center is not real huge. Um, there's a shipping dock, which we don't even use in the back, but we have a big roll up door and you'll be able to pull up in your van or uh, truck or, or whatever you have to deliver your art. And then um, there's some uh, carts there and uh, it's pretty easy to move in. It's not like, you know, um, a, a regular convention where the Teamsters are out there and you have to pay drage and do all that. It's it's pretty casual. We'll already have all the walls and hopefully the lights will be up uh, by Thursday morning. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. Sometimes it's Thursday afternoon, but, um, and there's still painting going on. But uh, by the afternoon, Thursday around noon, you will be able to start hanging. Uh, and uh, we'll be on time for that. So, you know, don't be nervous about that stuff. Our staff is really friendly. Everybody's there to help. Um, and you'll get the gist of that once you get there on site. So, um, yeah. So, Hannah, uh, well, is there any more questions? Ruth, do you have anything else? I have a question if you can hear me. Yep. Uh, shipping. I was told by Mark Shapiro not to use UPS. He said that he would give us uh, shipping companies that, you know, if they show up at the odd time of the day, they won't come back until the next day and you might miss the show. Yeah, we take uh, possession of the hall on Tuesday morning. So if the work is there Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday morning, you got a pretty big window. Okay. Right, Joel? I mean, you got a pretty big window there. So, um, and you're going to ship your work already stretched? Correct. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't really have a choice. I mean, that's. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jeff and me, Jeff and Mita are both in New York right now, and they run all, all of our. I'm operations. here. Oh, I'm hi, here. Mita. I could answer. So yeah. you're welcome to use UPS, FedEx, any shipper that you prefer. Just like Eric said, make sure that they um, deliver within the freight receiving hours, Wednesday or Thursday. And if it arrives Tuesday, you should be fine as well. Yeah, but just make sure you communicate that to to whoever you choose to use. Correct. And freight receiving hours are. Um, Wednesday and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that said, if it arrives on Tuesday, it, it'll be fine. We'll be there to accept it. Great. Great. Thank you. And mm -hmm. if uh, nothing sells, are they, the boxes stored on site? Do, do I repack them? Yes. So we'll, there's empty crate storage. Once you empty your um, boxes, you'll pick up an empty label at the service desk. Um, and then anything um, that's labeled empty, we'll store it during the show, bring it back to you during move out once the show is clear of attendees, and then you'll pack it up. 
And mm -hmm. you'll need um, to make sure you have it labeled and a bill of lading. And then um, Monday morning when your shipper arrives, we'll um, liaison with them and make sure that it's uh, they pick up the right package. Great. So basically, I buy um, if I go through UPS, who I've been using, uh, I will purchase the shipping there and the shipping back. And if it doesn't ship back, it sells. If it doesn't ship back, they refund that money for me. What if Correct. someone wants me to ship from there? Do I tell them I'm shipping at home and then shipping it to them? Um, in the exhibitor manual on four, on page 14, there's two shipping options. So oh. there's a UPS actually... Um, you know, within walking distance of the show, there's a, a few options. You could ship it right from over there. Great. Fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. I need to ask a question. I need to ask a question about um, how do people do, is it allowed to have a table in the booth? Because how do you, how do you handle all of the the sales if you can't <laughs> have some place to to uh, you know set things down like card things like that. Are you? Yeah. Well, um, I guess I know the mechanics. How you do all this? Well, it's easy. You know, you can always take them to the show office and sit down at a table in there and write it up. It's pretty simple to do. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes it really easy. So, you know, there's uh, the show floor area at the convention center, and then there's a big hallway outside of there, and um, and there's assistants out there, and then there's two really nice restrooms and then there's a huge show office with tables and chairs in there where you can go relax during the show. The one thing that you'll need to do right when you get there is meet all your neighbors because quite often you wanna go take a break or uh, you know, um, use the restroom or get some food or whatever. And your neighbor can always kind of watch your book for you. That's, that's always been a big key, so. Good. So Linda just texted me and said, you're not following the script. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Ed Liv. It's because uh, my retina detached from my eye and I can't see a thing out of my right eye anymore. I had surgery like five days ago. So I'm blind in my right eye for the next three months. So Linda's thinking that I could watch you with one eye. And <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to do a screen share and, and show the exhibitor manual. If, if you wanted to go down the points she has on the document. Uh, yeah, she was going to have, uh, we were going to have people share their, you know, their, where they're located throughout the United States and then the type right. of what work they're bringing. Um, but I think we can do that on the next call. This call okay. really is kind of getting, make sure you've got some pieces. We saw some of Jules work there, which is terrific. And, um, Thank you. you know, Jules been working with us for what, two years now? Yes, sir. Yeah. And um, recently sold a piece for, you know, over five figures, which was uh, terrific to a guy in LA. And um, this will be your first show with us though. Correct. Yeah. Can't wait. I may, yeah. come, I may come down tonight. You may what? I may come down tonight because I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but looking at the script that we had to talk to you about, um, the preparation, we'll do a couple preparation meetings between now and the show. Uh, the exhibitor manual, just read through it when you uh, want to fall asleep. No, I'm kidding. Mita and Jeff put a lot of work into that. <laughs> it's pretty thorough. You can always email us for questions. Um, myself, you know, Kelly for any of the online things, Mita, M-I-R-A at redwoodartgroup.com for any of the operational things. Um, 
The master classes we have begin on Thursday at 10 a.m. We'll set up your booth in the afternoon. We covered that. And then uh, on site, we'll tell you what to expect on that opening night. We usually have a pretty good crowd on, well, that's not my mouse. We usually have a pretty good crowd on opening night and a lot of people that come every year. There's some big galleries like Contemporary Art Projects and some other galleries that have been doing this Art Santa Fe show now for six, seven years and, and just, you know, kind of knock it out of the park, which is terrific. Your job is also to try to meet, you know, gallery owners. And we'll be inviting, you know, well over 100 galleries around the Santa Fe area to come to the show. Whether they come or not is up to them. But we provide them with um, uh, a pretty good idea of what they'll see and then also some uh you know food and drink for them to entice them to you know come over to art santa fe everybody likes a glass of wine and some cheese and crackers and whatever you know so uh we'll be providing all of that other than that um i think that's a pretty yeah. good amount to swallow from me and um, Hannah, why don't you give them a few tidbits on social media and then uh, we'll see if there's any more questions. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Hannah, I'm the social media director. And as we're ramping in like two months out, almost two months out is when we will start ramping up social media on Art Santa Fe. And then we also kind of suggest that you do the same on your personal social medias as well. And there's a lot of good tips in the exhibitor manual. There's a whole sheet on social media tips. If you have any questions, um, you can also email me at hannah at redwoodartgroup.com with images you want us to feature. If you're working on a new piece that you want us to promote, um, any information you'd like to include, and we'll make sure to get that posted to social. But I won't bore you with tips because it's all in the exhibitor manual. So you can check it out there. And then if you also want me to go over your social media and just give any, you know, advice that I have as kind of a consumer looking at it, I'm happy to do so as well. So just so everybody knows, Hannah does social media for Redwood Art Group and two other companies. She has her own company that uh, provides social media. She's really good at it and um, has really grown our uh, newsletter and our um, subscribers and followers on uh, all of our platforms. And I think we're on TikTok now, right? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet? Okay. <laughs> That's the next step. Um, Is there a place that you have information without contacting you that you could just read online? Yeah, it's all in the exhibitor manual. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, there's a whole page on social media tips all the way from like how to set up a Facebook account to the best hashtags to use. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'll open it up. Does anybody else have any more questions? Yeah. Just a real quick one. Um, I'm not going to be exhibiting. I'm just doing the online uh, mm -hmm. exhibit. And the only question I have was the images that I sent. There was a limitation of size. So I was just wondering, um, do we get to see before it goes, everything goes live, what it looks like? Because I, I have a feeling those images might not be the best. Uh, so what would we do at that point? Laura? Um, yeah, we will send you a link of your gallery. You'll, you'll get it from Kelly and I'll get to work on those in the next week or so. So you'll have plenty of time to tell me if you don't like how it looks. But if your pictures aren't big enough, I will tell you. Okay. No, it was just the resolution because there was that two gig limit, I think. Uh, right. To send it. Um, right. And usually, and I sent you something that was, I, I think, a little bit less <laughs> and it might not be the best. So uh, I'll, I'll look forward to the link and then take yeah. it from there. Appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. And in regards to that, I would suggest um, the sooner you can get your image submission form in, the better for you because Laura can then create your gallery page. You'll have that link that you can then share on social media. I'm sorry, should I have that already? No, not yet. She hasn't she hasn't done the social media. Oh, okay. The, I got I yeah. got you. Okay, thank you. Question. Okay. One more question. If you make a sale, 
and they it's cash and carry. Do I need to bring any materials to wrap that in? Yes, good idea. What's, um, what's typically done? You most of the exhibitors already have those materials on site, Jewel, because you probably have bubble wrapped your your um, correct canvases. So you'll just take that bubble wrap from that canvas and wrap it up, and the guy can take it away. Great. If not, there's always packaging or something kind of lying around. Uh, Santa Fe is one show where we really don't have a wrap station, do we, Mita? No. So uh, like the bigger shows, we have wrap stations where people can go over and they have bubble wrap and they can wrap things up. And we'll have some, but we'll have some bubble wrap um, on site. Um, if I may, on this note, um, I'm a sculptor. I'm, I will be bringing my items in crates and I noticed in my first read through on the manual that I can have my crates in a storage space that I can't access. So I'm not exactly sure how to safely containerize something for somebody if they buy it, if I can't access my crates during the show. Your, the empty crates, yes, that's correct. You won't be able to access them, but if a piece is sold, are the boxes that you're um, providing the buyer, those are small boxes, correct? My pieces range in size and I have a crate that's 36, uh, basically a 36 inch cube, as well as crates that are, you know, more like a 12 inch cube. Okay, well, as Eric mentioned in Santa Fe, we do have a lot of wiggle room and flexibility um, with space. So we could definitely make arrangements where you can store that and have access to it. So okay. you would just see me at the exhibitor service desk and then I'll show you where you can store that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Dana, even if it was at one of our big shows like Miami or New York, there's ways to get around that. Meaning, you know, I'll deliver it to you after the show or, you know, as soon as the show is finished, I'm going to wrap it up and have it shipped to you, whatever it may be. So, That's what I was kind of thinking about. It's, it's, you know, like, can I deliver this to you after at, at, uh, on Sunday evening or something like yeah. that? Um, th that's what I was trying to work out myself. But since it came up with even paintings needing to be wrapped, I thought I'd, I thought I'd check in. Yeah. Yeah. So people are flexible. They like to work with you. The most important thing, the most important thing is that you stay out of the way so people can enter your booth and you engage them in conversation with open-ended questions and then ask for the money. <laughs> <laughs> ask for the sale. Yes. Ask for the sale. And the easiest way to do that is to say, which credit card would you like to put it on? <laughs> so, you know, uh, if I was you, I'd start practicing with my husband, wife, who, partner, whoever right now, rehearsing. How do you like this piece? <laughs> and uh, go ahead and rehearse. You think I'm kidding, but, you know, I ran 20 galleries, 20 plus galleries, when I used to rehearse that, there were six to seven consultants in every gallery. I had 104 people working for me. And uh, I used to do role playing with them all the time. And it, it really helps. So you'll learn that on site. And with that, uh, we'll end today's call. And uh, Linda and our marketing team will schedule another call for sure before the before we all get on site in Santa Fe. And I wanna thank you all for signing up for the um, collective and hopefully you learn a lot and you know your experience is a good one. I have a question. Just real quick too, I just wanna add, uh, Ruth, I posted the, the social media uh, PDF to the chat. So if you go in there, you can click on that link and download it. What is it? I can type it in. She was talking to me. And I guess while he's looking, if you if I've got a 15 by four booth, uh, that comes with what? One stool, one chair. Is that typically where I put my guest book? 
and cards? <laughs> or do I wear them? No, you don't wear them. <laughs> Mita can answer that. Yes. So we will have um, card holders on site that you can install. It's just a small um, case that you can install directly to the wall um, if you'd like like that. And yes, the stool is eye level so that you can um, engage with exhibitors and use it for sitting or you can put a guest book on there, whichever you prefer. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You could even install a shelf on the wall if you wanted to put a you know, a guest book there or something like that. What happens is uh, with the tables, and we used to have, you know, these tables in every uh, four by 10 or four by 20 booth. It They all got out into the aisles and they got in the way and people couldn't yeah. enter the booth. And you, you just want to keep it as uncluttered as possible. So uh, that's the idea behind that. Someone is asking, um, uh, were we sent the exhibitor manual or is it on the website, Mira? On the website. So the exhibitor manual was emailed to you. Did you just um, register yesterday? It's Ryan. Ryan? No, I registered uh, probably about a month ago. Okay. But I was checking through my emails and I didn't see anything. Uh, what's the exhibiting name? Oh, I see. Um, Ryan Franklin. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't show that you were, um, I'll look at, I'll look into why you haven't received it and then I'll get back to you personally. I'll send you an email, okay. but I do thank see you. that you did not receive one yet. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other questions? Then we will sign off. Yay. Um, have a good rest of the day, and we'll all be talking again soon. Thanks, good to meet you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.